The Promised Prophet of the Bible Part 2 The Expected King In 63, BCE Jerusalem and Palestine were under occupation of the pagan Romans, to start a new period of torture, abuse and suffering for the children of Israel. The people who had waited long for a great Savior to return the lost kingdom and the ruling power to them. The children of Israel awaited the fulfillment of the prophecies given by Jacob, Moses and David and other prophets regarding the expected prophet. They had no doubt in the victorious king and prophet appearance, the prophet who will lead his followers to the glory of life and the happiness of the hereafter. Therefore, when the great Jesus came, and when they saw the miracles that God allowed him to perform, many of them followed him, hoping that he is the victorious great prophet. The Savior Prophet This is a fact clearly understood by those who are acquainted with the sayings of the Jews who were contemporary with Jesus. The Holy Scriptures told us about some of those who awaited the victorious expected king. Simeon was one of them, described by Luke, and, behold, there was a man in Jerusalem, whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Luke, 2.25, Simeon was one of those who were awaiting salvation. Nathaniel, who openly confessed to Jesus, about his feelings and his thoughts, was one of them, Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. John, 1 50 When the rumors that Jesus was crucified spread, some of them were very sad because the salvation they hoped for had ended. When Jesus disguised appeared to two of the disciples after resurrection they were surprised, and he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another? As you walk, and are sad? One of them, whose name was Cleopa, answering said unto him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem, and has not known the things that happened there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Luke 24 17-21 They were awaiting the salvation to come through him, as foretold in the scriptures of the Torah about the coming of the victorious king that will free his people and lead them to victory. In the contrary, they just heard of his crucifixion. The disciples said to Jesus, after the resurrection, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father has put in his own power. Acts, 1 6-7 He meant that it is not the time for the expected king. Awad Saman said, Those who examined the relationship between the disciples, apostles and Jesus, will find that they only considered him as a man, they were waiting for the Messiah, but the Messiah, according to the ideas inherited from their ancestors, was nothing more than an excellent messenger sent by God. Muhammad Ezzad al Tadawi, 27-29 The people of Israel, who waited long for the coming of the victorious great prophet, thought that John the Baptist was the expected Messiah, and as the people were in expectation. And all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he was the Christ, or not, Luke, 3.15. These crowds, who were waiting for salvation, when they saw Jesus, they said about him what they have said before about John the Baptist, and said unto the woman, Now we believe. Not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Saviour of the world. John, 442. Andrew said to his brother Simon, he first found his own brother Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. John, 141. He, Andrews, as the priest al Kodari said. By this sentence, he meant nothing more than what a pious Jew, who Christianity on the scale. By awaited the arrival of the Messiah to save and free Israel from the foreign slavery then refresh the spiritual life. History of the Christian Ideology, by Priest Hannah Gershaz al Ph.D., 1269. The Samaritan woman when she saw his wonders, the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah will come, which is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. John, 425 25-30. This news had spread among the children of Israel. 
Until the high priests feared the revenge of the Romans if they found out that the victorious great expected Messiah appeared in the person of Jesus. Therefore, they started to plan to frame him, accusing him of corrupting the nation, and claiming that he is the expected Savior. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council, and said, What do we? For this man does many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us, that one man should die for the people. And that the whole nation perish not. John, 1147 50 Then they said to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation, and forbidding giving tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, You said it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. Luke 23 2-4 Pilate found out that Jesus, PBUH, was innocent of what they accused him, as he did not claim that he is the expected king of the Jews. The Disciples' Lack of Understanding of the Prophecies About the Messiah The Bible writers were fond of the prophecies of the Torah, and they intentionally and obviously altered many of the meanings of the Torah's text to make it fit Jesus. Their love for Jesus or their alteration habits, resulted in making them misunderstand many of the prophecies that mentioned the expected Messiah. An example of this is what we find the book of Psalms about the expected prophet, a Psalm of David. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand, while I make your enemies your footstool, Psalms. 110-1, this particular prophecy was not meant in any way as to indicate Jesus, the son of Mary. Peter, or whoever related that to Peter, was mistaken when he interpreted it. Saying. For David did not go up into heaven, but he himself said. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool therefore let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. This Jesus whom you crucified, Acts, 229-37. The proof that Peter, and the Christians after him, were mistaken is that Jesus, said that he is not the expected Messiah who was mentioned by David. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? They said unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then did David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit in my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither dares any man from that day forth to ask him any more questions. Matthew, 22 41-46 The answer that Jesus, gave was firm, indicating that the expected prophet is not a descendant of David because David, called him his master, and the father does not call his son so. Jesus asked the Jews about the, expected Messiah, the one prophesied by David and other prophets, what do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? The Jews answered him, He is the son of David. Jesus told them that this was wrong, and he said, If David called him a god, then how can he be his son? So the next Messiah was not a descendant of David because David called him my lord or my master. It is known that Jesus, according to Matthew and Luke, is a descendant of the prophet David, he was often called, O son of David, look in Matthew, 1 1, 9 27, and Luke, 1938. In the book of Mark, Jesus, said, David himself calls him Lord. So how is he his son? Mark, 1237. It is also mentioned in Luke, and he said unto them, how they say that Christ is David's son. David himself said in the book of Psalms, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit in my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. David therefore called him Lord, how is he then his son? Luke, 2040-44. In spite of these statements, the Christians still insist that Jesus is the prophet whom David foretold of in his prophecy, even though they said that Jesus is the son of David. In his epistle to the Hebrews about God's good news to David, that God will bless his son Solomon, Paul, or the unknown writer, made it a prophecy of Jesus, he said. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Hebrews, 1 5. 
The writer of this letter quoted the phrase from the book of 2 Samuel, 7:14. he made it a prophecy about Jesus. It says, I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. The writer thought that this phrase was about Jesus, so he wrote it in his epistle. This quotation is not correct. The context of the sentence was to David, because God ordered the prophet Nathan to tell him. Now therefore thus you shall say unto my servant David. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will rise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my steadfast love shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you, your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Samuel, 2 7 8 17, the prophesied person is a son of David and not one of his grandchildren. He will be the king of the children of Israel after David's death. He will build the house of God, and he has been warned of God's punishment if he drifts away from the path of God. All of the above mentioned was fulfilled in the person of Solomon as mentioned in the Torah. However, none of the mentioned prophecies applied to Jesus, for, according to Christians, Jesus is God, and could not be warned by God. He was perfect, and did not sin. Jesus did not build any house for God on earth, and he was never a king to the children of Israel. He had no kingdom on earth as he said, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from hence. John, 1836. In the book of 1 Chronicles, it reads that the name of the prophesied is Solomon. David received these words, Behold, a son shall be born to you, who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Chronicles, 122 9. Another example of these fabrications or the misunderstandings is what Matthew said about Jesus, and his return from Egypt, when he was a child. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Matthew 2 14-15, he claimed that this confirms the Torah's prophecy, that comes in the book of Hosea, 11 1-2. The mentioned verse in the book of Hosea has nothing to do with Jesus. Instead, it tells about the return of the nation of Israel from Egypt with Moses. Originally, the context is about Jacob, and then it moves on to talk about his sons and their return from Egypt, their idol worshipping, and ignoring God's commandments and orders. He said, When Israel was a child, then I loved him, and called my son out of Egypt. As they called them, so they went from them, they sacrificed unto Baal, and burned offerings to the idols. Hosea, 11 1 2. This verse has nothing to do with Jesus, the worshipping of idols mentioned, took place before Jesus, and it cannot be applied to the people who were contemporary with him. The Jews had left idol worshipping centuries before Jesus was born, after they released from the captivity of Babylon, and they never withdrew from that repentance, as the history books tell us. The use of the form, my son, is commonly used in the Torah, as in, and the Lord said unto Moses, When you go to return into Egypt, and you shall say unto Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn, and I say unto you. Let my son go, that he may serve me. Dot. Exodus, 421-23 Jesus, suffered long from his disciples' misunderstandings of his words, and during his life, he had corrected many of their mistakes in understanding the prophecies. And even most of his sayings. They failed to understand the simplest of his sayings. If such is the case, how could they understand the prophecies? In one incident, he advised them saying, and he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and the leaven of Herod. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? 
Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your heart hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? Mark 8:15 to 18 How could you not understand that, I did not mean real bread? In another, Jesus, talked to them and they did not understand him, many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? John, 660. They used to misunderstand his simple words, and then they were afraid to ask him to explain what they did not understand. Mark said, For he taught his disciples, and said to them, The Son of Man is delivered to the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they did not understand that saying, and were afraid to ask him. Mark, 931 31-32 These misunderstandings of the scripture's indications extended even to the educated and the elite individuals of the children of Israel. Nicodemus misunderstood the words of Jesus, when he said, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and you do not understand these things? John 3 3 10, Nicodemus did not understand the meaning of the spiritual rebirth, he thought that to be born again means that the person has to go back inside his mother's womb. Nicodemus was the teacher of the children of Israel. If this was the way that he understood, how about Matthew, the tax collector, and John and Peter the fisherman? They were just two illiterate disciples according to the book of Acts. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they astonished. Acts, 4.13 The disciples of Jesus, were the illiterates of the world as Paul reported, he said, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Corinthians, 1 1 27. The relationship between Jesus, words and deeds during his life on earth and the scriptures' prophecies were unclear to the disciples. Then after his ascent, they thought that the prophecies were for him. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, and then they remembered that these things had been written about him, and had been done him. John, 12 14-16 The children of Israel had been longing for the Savior. They assumed that he was Jesus, when they heard these words, some of the people said, This really is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Is the Christ to come from Galilee? Has not the scripture said, that the Christ comes from the offspring of David, and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? John, 738-41 The crowds also, in spite of their different cultures, were trying to find salvation through the person of Jesus. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrata who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be their peace. When the Assyrian comes into our land and treads in our palaces, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princes of men. They shall shepherd the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod at its entrances, and he shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and treads within our borders. Micah, 5 2-6 In fact, Jesus did not fulfill this prophecy. The Jews were looking for the one who would be their king, save them from the Assyrians, and bestow the peace among them. Dr. Ahmad Shalabi quoted Perry's words regarding Jesus, because of his eloquence he was able to attract many of his followers, the Jews who awaited the Messiah, and they gave him this title. They attribute to him what he did not say, as we will see later.